Jordan Peterson, we needed a good uh, clinical psychologist in here today, mm -hmm. and that's why you're here. I want to read something that was in the St. John's uh, Telegram. Uh, this is many years ago, but it's very cute. Consider the Garden of Eden, they write, when it was just Adam, Eve, and the man upstairs. Come on, Eve says to her mate, have a bite. Chances are he'll never find out, and the prize will be amazing. So Adam bites, a willing participant in the world's first recorded act of gambling. Creation mythologies from cultures across the globe all involve tales of risk-taking and fate-tempting, which suggests one unassailable fact. The human urge to gamble is profound, is universal, is primal. Do you think we're hardwired to gamble? We're hardwired to, to seek certain kinds of rewards. And our brains aren't that good at computing probabilities, especially when you get into the range of numbers that are really unimaginable. So your brain really doesn't automatically calculate the difference between a one in a hundred chance and a one in a million chance. Because we're not really wired biologically to respond properly emotionally to those kind of figures. And there's a difference between taking a chance and gambling. And let's leave poker out of it for the time being. You're not gambling with a slot machine. You're just losing. Well, you're it's, playing a game. You are playing a game. Yeah, but it's set up mathematically so that you have two, two ways. It's set up mathematically so that over the long run you have no probability of winning. And secondarily, it's set up to maximize the probability that you'll become addicted. Because slot machines use a particular kind of what's called a reinforcement schedule. It's a variable ratio reinforcement schedule. And what it teaches people is to be insanely persistent. So if you want to teach animals to pull a lever so to the point where they starve to death, you use a variable ratio reinforcement schedule. And that's exactly what slot machines do. There's no excuse for it. Okay, imagine a field 1,000 feet by 1,000 feet. Now imagine you're, you're going to bet $10 that you can predict which four inch square a golf ball is going to land on if it's dropped. That's your odds of winning the lottery. Don't people know that? No, they can't. You can't know that. Like, it's not easy to know that. And it's for the reason I described earlier, mm -hmm. is that big numbers aren't real. And, and it, it's because, like, most of the numbers we use are, like, between one and a hundred, or right. maybe one in a thousand. They know the odds are lousy, but they also know for two bucks they can just sort of dream mm, for but ten the brain, minutes. Yeah, yeah, but that's the issue. That's exactly the issue, is that for your buck, you get a dopamine kick. That's exactly what you're buying. And you might argue that it's worth a buck because you get the dopamine kick, but it's a drug. And the problem with the reinforcement is that it doesn't indicate an actual reward. So it's actually, the gamblers, the gambling industry actually capitalizes on a shortcoming of the human nervous system. And the government's promoting that. And the worst thing about it, I really believe the worst thing about it is that it preys on those who can control themselves the least for valid reasons. Like, here's an example. If you have Parkinson's disease and you take L-DOPA, there's a pretty good, decent chance you'll become a compulsive gambler. Like, that's not good. You know, and it's not really your fault. It's that the medication alters your reward sensitivity, and that'll send you into a spiral. Are they not fun? Fun, lots of things are fun. I mean, fun in itself is no mark of what's appropriate. There's also, uh, if you're a bully, bullying people is fun. Um, cheating on your wife can be fun. Internet porn is obviously fun. But Cocaine, for sure, is fun. But not advisable. Fun is not an indication that things are advisable. I mean, wouldn't that be lovely if everything that was fun was advisable? Yeah, well, forget that. It'd be a great world, wouldn't it? Well, yeah, it's something world. to think about, but it certainly isn't the real world. The thing also about those electronic machines, eh, there's some very insidious things about those. Yeah. Because with a mechanical machine, there's a, certain, there's a certain honesty to a mechanical machine. But there's a real dishonesty to an electronic machine. Because those things can change yeah. the ratios whenever they want. And an intelligent neuroscientist could figure out how to program those things so they're unbelievably addictive. In fact, the technology for that already exists. And it's also worth pointing out that... Um, there's a subset of vulnerable people, often elderly people, certainly people who have trouble with alcohol. Anybody who has trouble with impulsivity or cognitive control, who is going to be, who's going to be put into real danger by the uh, continual widespread propagation of gambling. Are you going so far as to say the government is counting on those people to They're encouraging it. They're look, encouraging and it's so it. hypocritical. Eh? I want to look at their ads. You know, there's the Ontario, I think, Ontario Gaming Commission. And then, you know, and, and, and the ads are in large letters. And underneath it says, please gamble <laughs> responsibly. And I think, well, first of all, gamble and responsibly are contradictions in terms. And I think it's, at least they should be honest about the fact that they're doing something corrupt. Instead of saying, on the one hand, well, you know, come out and have fun, and, 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 and then saying, on the other hand, well, we actually care about you. It's like, no, we don't care about you. The more money we can take from you, the better. And it's short-term and unimaginative. I mean, the introduction of gambling as a problem into Canada has been completely created by the government. It basically started, well, started with charities and bingos and horse racing. 
And then it really kicked in in about 1976 when the government decided to fund the Montreal Olympics in part through lottery tickets. Right. And ever since then, it's been an explosion. And so they have manufactured a, a fairly major social health issue out of nothing. And you can't say that about cigarettes or liquor. So I don't think there's any excuse for it all. And the fact that people are relying on, on it as a means of generating revenue, it's like, over what time period are you calculating the revenue? So the government's removing another impediment. Why is that good? I don't see that as positive. I mean, it'll make more people gamble. Let, uh, people who are less impulsive will be more likely to gamble because they trust the source. Trust them to what? Not steal their credit card. They can't trust them to trust not them. take their money when they're gambling. No, but try, if, if you're concerned that the private sites are not regulated well enough or that they're too dangerous or they're even more intoxicating than what the government's gonna, going to allow, does the fact that the government has this good housekeeping seal of approval on it make it a little more benign? No, it I doesn't. don't think that making something that isn't safe look safe is... But st I'm also curious, just for the sake of argument, why doesn't the government get into porn distribution? You could certainly argue that it's less harmful. Uh, well, but, they, I mean, no, so far, people they, don't they, think that's a very good idea. They do tax it, they do derive revenues from it, don't Right, they? but they don't yeah. run it. They don't run it. Okay. Right, but they could protect the women better than the private corporations would. Hmm. And, you know, there's, like, it's no more or less addictive than gambling. It's a lot less expensive. So, like, why stop with gambling? Me, we were funded by the Ontario Gambling Commission last year to, to, to run a study on gamblers, and we couldn't get permission from the bloody <laughs> casinos to let us on the buses yeah. to interview the Who's people the who we? were going to the gambling. Who's the One we? of my graduate students and oh, I. I yeah, so, you know, this is a good example of exactly that kind of hypocrisy. I don't think anybody was suggesting that people shouldn't be allowed to gamble. We, what the argument so far has been fundamentally that it isn't appropriate for the government to be particularly to be promoting it. And promoting that's a completely it. different argument. It is not, it's not moral busybodiness at all.